the language of true self sometimes is very problematic because when people get on the journey they sometimes tend to idealize who they are and so the language of no self sometimes can be very helpful in terms of uh, dismantling our illusions about who we are uh, dismantling different processes that are active in us uh, that manifest in very specific ways as reactivity, as selfishness, and etc. Different traditions certainly have different views on that, or at least different language to talk about that and give people access to different aspects of the divine. And therefore, and that's why those experiences and paths can be so complementary. For me personally, and I'll speak from a Christian tradition, however, in a Christian tradition we don't necessarily talk about the disappearance of the self. We talk about uh, dying to self, where we kind of disappear and dissolve only to discover who we really are in God. So there is a process of dying that takes place, but your uniqueness and, and your individuality doesn't necessarily disappear, uh, but who you thought you were definitely does. It's a paradox and, and one can't really talk about it adequately. But from my perspective, it's exactly what I talked about at the beginning. You cease to exist as you envision yourself to be, only so you can begin to exist as God envisions you to be. Even though uh, getting there feels like a complete loss of self and even loss of life. It feels like a crucifixion of sorts. Nonetheless, uh, in that experience, then you discover that you are actually more yourself than you've ever been. St. John of the Cross has this beautiful teaching that I really love, where he talks about a piece of wood and, and a fire. And he says, when you throw the wood into fire, If the wood is wet, the smell is often nasty, the smoke is kind of not very beautiful. And the wood, before it can catch the fire, sheds all the tears that are inside of it. And then once it's dry, that piece of wood can no longer do but what the fire does. In the Christian tradition, I mean, that's the experience of the divine union or the sacred marriage. But again, we don't necessarily say that we, as individuals per se, don't exist. In Buddhism, it's talked about differently. In Advaita Vedanta, that's talked about uh, differently. I personally think that all of those experiences and realizations uh, complement each other. And any language or theology for me is really just a functional narrative that helps us to dive into uh, the actual experience of transformation. Language is limited. But I think those differences in the traditions are, are also very important and shouldn't just be dismissed.